Does this glass count as wall space in the NEC? Well, let's find out. On the left-hand side, I have us a receptacle circled. And then if we were installing them from left to right, we would have to pull a tape measure and no more than 12 feet from that, we'd have to install our next one. But then we have to make sure that we also have one within six feet of the end of that wall. And that'll make more sense when we read the code language. And the question for today is, is where does this wall space end? Does it end right here where this fixed glass panel starts? Or does it end right here where this fixed glass panel ends? Because it's going to make the difference of whether or not this installation is code compliant. If the wall ends here, it looks like this one's within six feet, we're fine. But if the wall space ends here, that does not look like it's within six feet to me. Let's take a look at the paraphrase code language. We're in 210.52a, and this is where we get our provisions for wall space. Let's start out with the general right here in part A. Receptacle outlets must be installed in every kitchen, family room, dining room, living room, parlor, library, den, sunroom, bedroom, recreation room, or similar living space. So if you're not in one of these spaces or similar, these codes don't apply, the ones that we're learning in this section. Now let's look into part one when it talks about spacing. Receptacle outlets must be placed so that no point measured horizontally along the floor line of any wall space is more than six feet. That's where we get the six foot, 12 foot rule. I have to have one within the first six feet of the start of that wall. Then I'm allowed to go up to 12 foot after that. But then I also must have one within the six feet of the finishing of the wall. So at no point, theoretically, could you set a TV with a six foot cord on it and if you set it right in the middle of that 12 feet, I could pull to the left and plug in, and I could pull to the right and plug in, and everything would be fine, and I would be code compliant. Now let's take a look at how we measure this wall line. That's in part two. Wall space, for the purpose of this rule, includes any area two feet or wider along the floor line. So any space that's two feet or wider is going to have to have at least one receptacle outlet. Even around corners, that's uninterrupted by items like doorways, fireplaces, stationary appliances, or fixed cabinets. So if I have any of these items, I don't count that space. So if it's a normal doorway, you don't count that space. I do want to note that this is the 26 paraphr 2026 NEC paraphrase language. Consult your copy of the NEC because these, that part of that code has changed in the 26 just a little bit. Part two says, and this is what pins the tail on the donkey for today's question, areas with fixed panels in walls, not including sliding panels. We're going to read part three, then we're going to look at our photo and tie all this together. Part three says spaces created by fixed room dividers like bar type counters or railings. We're not going to get into that today. I want to focus on part two. Let's take a look at it now. Areas with fixed panels and walls, not including sliding panels. So let's take a look at our scenario. Is our glass fixed glass? Yes. So this would actually count as wall space. Your wall space measurement would end here, and that would make this receptacle not within six feet. So this would actually not be code compliant. But let's flip this around. What if this other panel was one of the double sliding glass doors? Would then it count as wall space? Well, the answer is no. Your wall space would actually end right here, which would make this code compliant, which can make it challenging for installers and inspectors if they don't know what the door is going to be. It's hard to know that when you come in and do a rough end, and that's why this likely failed. As an inspector, we don't know what door it's going to be. As an installer, we don't know what door, what door it's going to be. So we just pull off the side and we start our you know, 6 foot, 12 foot rule and everything seems fine. But for this case, this would not be code compliant because you're required to start this at the, at the end of that fixed panel. I am the electrical code coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others. If there's anything you need from me, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.